What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, this is the second time I'm recording this video because I just, I was having the worst time with this, I don't know why. So if I seem frustrated, oh, you know why. And today we're continuing our look at the top 10 best cards in every main set of the game. Man, it's been a while since we've done one of these. I can't wait for the algorithm to punish me because I didn't make Duel Links content, so no one watched it. <laughs> and today's set, we're gonna be looking at Judgment of the Light. This set was a bit hard for the Discord and I to do because like, half the cards in this set have seen like competitive play in some fashion uh this set is really really good so if you feel like i missed a card um yeah i probably did not only that i i think this might be the set that was the current new set when i first got back into the game and like after my long hiatus i'm 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 like 90 percent sure this was the set that was on the shelf at the moment so that's kind of fun i'm 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 pretty positive so without further ado so i can just get this goddamn thing done let's just get started Number 10 is Fire King Avatar Yaksha, a level 4 beast warrior monster with 1800 attack and 200 defense, which I think is relevant, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Alright, so what do? If a Fire King monster you control is destroyed by a card effect, you can special summon this thing from your hand. Neat. It extends your plays. Cool. But then it's got this other weird effect. If this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can destroy one card on your field or in your hand. Now you might be thinking, But Dave, that's bad card advantage! And you know what it is? In any other scenario, you'd be 100% correct. Except it's Fire Kings, baby! Fire Kings like getting blown up! So this thing destroying a monster on your field or in your hand allows you to trigger the effects of your other Fire Kings. What's novel about this card, though, is that it destroys the card in your hand. It does not discard. Obviously, this is there so that it trips your other Fire Kings, but you can use this card to also destroy things like Yubel or those baby dinosaur things that fail to say that they care where they were destroyed from. Destroying a card in your hand is actually novel in Yu-Gi-Oh because not very many effects do it. So things that have generic when this card is blowed up do a thing effects are made better because they don't need to be on the field first in order to satisfy that condition, which is normally what balances those effects. Almost sees play exclusively because of it. Number nine is Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare. I'm not gonna make any jokes. Nope. Mm -mm. This normal trap card has a lot going for it, which makes it really interesting. In this set, we got the Trap Trick Monsters, which are a series of plant and insect type monsters that deal in some fashion with the whole trap cards. Bottomless trap hole, regular just trap hole, floodgate trap hole, all of those things. They're actually part of a series of cards, the whole trap cards. And the Trap Tricks archetype uses those whole trap cards as its like de facto back row support. So it makes sense they got their own one just for posterity's sake. And it's actually really good. When a monster that was special summoned to this turn activates its effect on your opponent's side of the field, negate that activation, and if you do, destroy that monster. So yes, it doesn't work on monsters that have been there for a hot minute, but half the monsters we summon in this game use their effect the turn they were played because that's why your opponent went through the effort to make them. Use some effect they needed. So more often than not, this thing is actually live. Especially going first. And if used on an extra deck monster, it tends to be pretty good card advantage. Slowly building hat, boys. All right, here we go. Number eight, Cold Soldier Wochbark. Coach Soldier Wochbark. What? What? Are you having a stroke? Coach Soldier Wolfbark. Level four Fire Beast Warrior Monster. I'm I'm detecting a theme here. This bad boy lets you target one level four Fire Beast Warrior Monster in your graveyard and special summon to your side of the field in defense position. Its effects are negated. Hmm, a level four that summons a level four from your graveyard. I wonder what you're going to do with it. It's kind of neat when we get these free agent type cards that work with other decks. In this case, Fire Fists and Fire Kings, because it's an interesting way of bolstering a strategy without necessarily breaking a strategy. Being that it is a free agent, it doesn't benefit from all of the support that the two decks that use it benefit from, because it is not part of their archetype. But it does a little bit, like with Tanky. So it's a nice little balancing act, boosting the power ceiling of the deck without making it stupid. Approved! And its effect's pretty loose in its restrictions. It's just a hard once per turn, and uh, doesn't even say you can't use it on itself. Neat. 
Number seven is the quick play spell card Ixioncore. Ah, Ixioncore, the card that I got to before I quit and restarted the recording. <laughs> this is an interesting card because it is a quick play spell card that is anti Ixia support. And it makes sense to get cards like this because at this point in time, Ixias are the thing that we're all using because we're in the middle of the Ixia era and we have tons of very powerful Ixia decks. So giving the players a tool to use against those decks makes a hell of a lot of sense. What do? Target one face up XC monster your opponent controls that has XC materials, detach those materials, send them to the graveyard, then return the XC monster to the extra deck. Then, if there was any monsters among the detached materials, special summon them to your opponent's side of the board, but reduce their level by one. In face up defense position, cards and effects cannot be activated in response to this card's activation. So therein lies why this card is just so useful. Not only does it remove one of their XC monsters from their side of the field and puts it back in the extra deck, it doesn't allow your opponent to activate in response to the card, so it can't use its own pesky effect to try to stop the spell card. So this card is most likely going to resolve and remove that monster. Nice. But you might be thinking, But Dave, it gives him a bunch of free bodies! And again, the advantage isn't great because of that. However, by reducing their levels by one, any XE deck that's competitively viable isn't going to be able to do anything with those two monsters. It's very unlikely that your opponent will have a monster in their extra deck taking up space just in case that they have monsters on their side of the field with levels they're not supposed to have. If I'm running a rank 4 deck, I probably don't have a rank 3 monster in my extra deck just in case. That is a waste of space. Unless there's tons of level reduction running around rampant in the format and I'm making a weird anti side deck meta call. I, I probably, those two monsters are just stuck on my board and just taking up space. I can't do anything with them. So it clogs your board, removes a monster, your opponent can't do nothing about it. Pretty solid little quick play spell card. All right, like I said before, we had fire fists in this set. So here we go. Brotherhood of the Fire Fist, Rooster. Brotherhood of the Fire Fist, c Level three fire beast warrior monster. What do? When this card is special summoned by the effect of a fire fist monster, add one fire fist monster from your deck to your hand. Nice. Whether you're playing the rank four fire fist version of the deck or the rank three slash five version of the fire fist deck, it is a rank spam deck. One monster summons another. That is not a hard effect to get off of this deck. So when used as a combo piece, it toolboxes another card for your combo to keep going. Seems pretty neat, but it ain't done there. Once per turn, you can send one phase up fire formation card you control to the graveyard to set one from your deck. That is spell or trap. Most of the fire formation cards really don't do anything once you've activated them. They sit on the field, they give your monsters maybe like an attack boost or something, but they, they just kind of sit there. So this thing allows you to use one that has been spent, like your tanky, to get another one, like your tensu or whatever. It searches your monsters, it searches your spells and traps, it's a fantastic combo piece, and it really gives the deck a hell of a lot of consistency. Number five, Trap Tricks Mermelio. Okay, so I know I tend to like to keep these lists like one archetype entry per list. However, the Trap Hole card we'll just say is a Trap Hole card, and this will be the Trap Tricks entry because Mermelio is such a good card, it'd be weird not to talk about it. Level four, Earth Insect Monster. What do? Unaffected by the effects of normal whole trap cards. When this card is normal summoned, you can add one normal whole trap card from your deck to your hand. Something like that Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare we just mentioned. Also, when this card is special summoned, target one spell or trap your opponent controls and blow it up. It's basically Trap Tricks Stratos Nightmare. <laughs> It searches your own back row and destroys your opponents, meaning that if you summon this card a couple times during a duel, you get some pretty solid advantage off of it. And being that Trap Tricks are a control deck, advantage is the way you win. Number four is Star Eater, a level 11 Light Dragon Synchro Monster. Yes. <laughs> We still get Synchro Monsters once in a while. Not only is he like one of the only level 11s we have in this game, he also has 3200 attack, which makes him big number. That's a big number. He's also completely generic. One tuner plus one or more non-tuners. Very cool, actually. Actually, that's actually pretty novel for a synchro monster that's like over level eight. Half the ones that are like nine, 10, 11, and 12 are all like one tuner, one synchro non-tuner plus your freaking grandma and, and five dollars to make this. And it's like, ugh. Sell your soul to the devil just to summon Quasar Dragon. But nah, this guy's totally generic. But what do you do though? Must be synchro summoned, can't be special summoned by other methods. You know what, that's, that's fine. He a dragon, I'm sure there's a million ways to cheat him out of the extra deck otherwise, so sure. This card Synchro Summon cannot be negated. Hmm, he sticks. That's nice. When Synchro Summon, cards and effects can't be activated. 
<laughs> Very nice. So not only does that mean your opponent can't like solemn strike it, they can't even like bottomless trap hole it once it hits the field. So it summons, it summons, it sticks. If this card attacks, it is unaffected by other card effects until at the end of the damage step. All right, so he big number, and when he swing, he swing. He really is just a giant beat stick, but they gave him a bunch of effects so that basically when you summon him, you get to keep your beat stick. Granted, there's that uh, dicey window between when he is summoned and when you can enter your battle phase and declare an attack that you can lose him. Uh, so just hope your opponent doesn't figure that one out. But at 3200, he's a uh, he big number. You're gonna get over stuff. He a star. All right, here we go, an XC monster for our XC set. Number 66, Master Key Beetle. Remember this thing? Rank far, rank far, rank far, dark, insarked. Are you having a stroke? 2,500 attack, 800 defense. That's not bad for, for a rank four, actually. Two level four darks. I mean, it could be worse. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card and target one face of card you control. As long as this card's on the field, that card cannot be destroyed. Also, if this face up card would be destroyed, you can destroy one of its targets instead. Master Key Beetle was the key to a bunch of degenerate locks and things. <laughs> that was bad! Nothing quite like making a bunch of floodgates and then sticking Key Beetle on there so that your opponent can't do anything and can't remove the floodgates. <laughs> isn't, isn't Yu-Gi-Oh exciting? Despite the fact that he's a degenerate asshole, the card is actually pretty good. And at 2,500 attack, he's just big enough where your opponent is gonna have a hard time smashing over him with like the normal summon that is the only thing they can do. <laughs> All right, we're back to Synchro Monsters in the middle of our late era XC set. Armadi's Keeper of Boundaries. Yeah, Armadi's actually came out this late. 2300 attack, 1500 defense. What do? Level five Light Fiend. Neat. One tuner, one or more non-tuners. It's generic. And its effect is pretty simple. If this card attacks or is attacked, your opponent cannot activate card effects till the end of the damage step. Matter of fact, this card is so simple and effective for going into your battle phase and swinging and making sure it works that whenever a card does this, we say that it has an Armadi's effect. The card is synonymous with when I attack, I attack and you don't dare mirror force me. Which is funny considering uh, Star Eater came out in this set too. <laughs> and before I called that thing Level Eater. All right. We got an honorable mention. And the honorable mention is TCG Player. If you guys want to spend your money on expensive cardboard, use my link in the description below and you can buy all the cardboard, which is important because uh, locals and things are finally opening up so we can actually play real Yu-Gi-Oh. Hey, Ryan told me to sneak them in instead of uh, making a whole section because no one watches it otherwise. But no, our real honorable mention is cock doodle do I'm sensing a theme here with Cockadoodle Doo is actually a fantastic card. Um, again, a bit strange because it's a tuner monster in our late XC era set, but what do? If there are no monsters on the field, you can special summon this thing, its level becomes level three. If your opponent controls monsters and you control no cards, you can special summon this thing, its level becomes level four. This face up card leaves the field, banish it instead. So uh, it's a tuner that modulates its level, opening up your extra deck possibilities and it puts itself on board. It sounds, uh, sounds pretty hassle free to me. We also have a dishonorable mention, and that dishonorable mention is single purchase. This normal spell card is interesting because it searches like every monster in the game, but it's also really bad. If you have three or more cards in your hand, then none of them are monsters, banish your entire hand and then add a monster from your deck to your hand, but you can only summon that monster this turn. <laughs> Man, that monster better be good, because <laughs> you went super minus. No one plays this. I guess if you're like a jackass and it's like, I don't know, uh, one of those floodgate monsters, I guess it's probably all right. I don't know. It's, it's not very good. All right, and number one, the best card in the set, according to my Discord, <laughs> Bujin Yamato. Oh, it's it's the Helmet Man. Nice. Nah, uh, Yamato's pretty good. Bujin's are an interesting deck because it's also like a Beast Warrior deck, but it's not fire, it's light. <laughs> Unlike the rest of the things in this set. 1800 attack, 200 defense, what do? Once per turn during your end phase, you can add one Bujin monster from your deck to your hand and also send a Bujin monster from your hand to the graveyard. But you can only control one of these things. All right, so what makes that so good? <laughs> well, uh, Bujin's a uh, helmet deck and the way it works is you, uh, you play Yamato and that's about it. So use all the guys in your hand and all the guys in your graveyard to defend the Yamato. Half their deck are just variations on Honest and then you just hold down the fort with the Yamato until you get an opportunity to make one of your Xyz and swing for a bunch of damage. It's an effective strategy. Repeat after me, never attack Yamato. Don't, don't do it. 
All right, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a really interesting set because there's tons of cards in here that I didn't even get a chance to mention. And the ultimate rares in this set are also like really good. They're all like, it was, they're all really good. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. And remember, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Well, 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 look who's back. Be sure to subscribe to the channel this time. Or I will use my Millennium Rod and do devious, devious things to you. Evil things. Also, by the way, Bakora never did ever get that milk. I did get the bloody milk. No, you didn't. This is oat milk. It's not real milk. It needs to come from a cow. How do you milk an oat?